Hello everybody, this is Drew Douglas and for day 14 of WordPress for Designers on blog.themeforest.net. Uh, today we are moving right along and we are going to finish our uh, front page of our paper business theme that we've been working on. Um, a few of you mentioned in the comment section that you were having a little trouble hearing me on my mic, so I have uh, I made sure I turned up the volume this time, so hopefully um, you guys can hear me a little bit more clearly and let me know, of course, if you have any more uh, issues with the volume or, uh, or video or anything else, and I'll do my best, uh, my best to fix it. A uh, quick overview of what we'll accomplish today. Um, we are going to skip the slider for one day, as a lot of you, uh, would, you know, would rather have just um, finished the home page, um, as you mentioned in the comments section, and that's fine. Uh, that's probably just as good of an idea as anything else. So we will uh, finish our static front page today. We will learn all about using, uh, using custom um, queries and uh, just a lot of cool little WordPress tricks like working with custom fields and um, some, um, some excerpts and stuff like that. So let's just uh, pick up where we left off and you will remember that this is what we left off with. Um, last time on day 13 we put in our basic reset we got our logo styled we handled our navigation and uh, and we got everything kinda ready and in place so let's go into your text editor of choice mine is Coda and uh, let's get coding here um, go ahead and open up frontpage.php which is the file that uh, where our main home page is located and uh, keep in mind that the logo and the navigation are in the header.php file, so that is in get header, and this uh, standard footer we have going right now is in uh, get footer. So all of our uh, other content, um, all of this content, is obviously going to go in between our get header and get footer call. So what we want to do is create a new file and we're going to call this featured section dot php and this file is, is going to be the file that uh, contains our slider and everything that uh, goes along with it and we're just going to give it a div id of featured section and I'm actually going to fill the div with uh, and nbsp semicolon which is uh, just like a, an HTML ampersand way of putting just a, a space in between a div. Um, as I've found, sometimes if you leave divs completely empty, you can get some weird behavior. So I uh, always think it's best just to fill in a div with something, and I usually just use uh, that technique. Okay, now that we have our div ID uh, in our featured section, just kind of a little placeholder, we're going to go back to our front page.php and we're going to open up some PHP tags and say include template path all one word space period open up some quotes slash featured section dot PHP okay we'll go ahead and save that now there shouldn't be any changes yet if we go here um, and refresh because that div doesn't have anything in it and it doesn't have any styles associated with it yet. Well even though we're not going to work on our slider let's go ahead and uh, style it so we can kind of style around it and kind of get a feel for our how our uh, final home page is going to look. So uh, open up style.css and scroll down to the very bottom and we're going to start a new section and it's going to be called featured styles okay and we will just uh, style our featured section ID uh, we'll go ahead and put a background image in a transparent URL gonna be style images featured underscore background dot JPEG no repeat and scroll the width is 824 pixels uh, the way I sliced it and the height was 301 pixels and we just need some basic uh, well just one margin I'm gonna 
have a left margin of about negative 25 pixels so we can align everything um, the way we want it to. And uh, the way I sliced it just requires me to pull it to the left a little bit. So yours might not require you to do that. Uh, mess around with the margins and see what works for you. Okay, and if we refresh, we can see here's where our slider is going to be. Um, and here's just the background of our slider that we sliced the other day. So, um, yeah, that's all we're going to do with our slider today. I just wanted to put that placeholder in there for now. So what we're going to cover now is uh, the tagline here, the paper plane, the three columns, and our footer. So pretty much everything else. Um, the, probably the most confusing, or not, not confusing, but trickiest part of this will be how do we get three columns to show and how do we separate our three columns using one text box from the um, admin area of WordPress. And I'm going to show you that now. So what we're going to do is log into um, our admin panel and go ahead and go to pages, edit, and then click on the home page which is uh, where all of our information for our front page is. And you'll see I'm already there and I already have some basic info in here and I'm going to explain this. Um, basically what we need is we need three different columns to show up. Who we are, what we do, and latest blog. Now, who we are and what we do is going to be um, kind of defined by us and written by us, meaning the content, these, the, the paragraphs right here, are going to be uh, you know, just hard-coded into this text editor by us. However, the latest blog, is just gonna, we're just going to pull the latest blog entry and just a snippet of it and display it. Um, so the question arises, how do we get three different columns uh, to show up in just the, you know just using this one text box and uh, the obvious answer is just you, you know to use a, a div class that just floats to the left and uh, and then style that um, we could do you know some people might say well you could use WordPress short codes um, if you don't know what WordPress short codes are if you look up where my cursor is now a short code would look something like this uh, you know front column you can have your data and you know blah then you'd end your front column that's what a short code would look like but uh, you know I don't really see how much different that is than an HTML tag you, you know you're still opening and closing a tag the only difference is you're just giving it a class so I think we can handle um, a div class and this will be able to solve a lot of our um, any headaches that might come up from this so if we see uh, we have a div class of front columns who we, or who we are, which is our first column, and then inside a paragraph tag, uh, just some basic dummy text, and then uh, just a kind of a dummy link that we could link to uh, our about page or whatever page we uh, want to later on. Scroll down again, we close our div, and we open up another div class of front columns. You know, again, what we do, this is our second column, and uh, just some paragraphs with some dummy text again, and a link. So what we're going to do is we're going to style these front columns um, to where they'll all float to the left, and then we'll um, and then we'll have them as we need them. So the last thing uh, to kind of think about here is how are we going to get the blog entries to show up, and we will handle that um, we will handle that shortly. But for now, just know that we have some basic content in our home uh, home text box. Um, and we're using a div class of front columns around each uh, individual column. Okay, so let's go into Coda, and now we need to get that information out. So we go uh, underneath our include of featured section on frontpage.php, and we're going to start a basic loop here. And uh, you know we've gone over loops many times now, so hopefully this should look pretty familiar. We're going to say if have posts colon and we're going to make a simple uh, div ID of front content okay now we're going to say PHP while have posts the post Okay, so now we're inside of our loop, which is pulling all of our information from our home page. Um, the first thing that we want to display, though, is our tagline. 
um, because that comes before our columns do. So how are we going to display our tagline? Um, how are we going to separate it from all this text we have in here? Well, what we're going to do is scroll down, and WordPress has what's known as custom fields, which, which allows us to describe um, custom names and custom values for extra uh, information or data or text that we might need. Um, and it's really, really basic. Um, pretty much I've, given, I've created a custom field by typing in tagline for the name, and then for the value I've just typed in uh, the tagline which is we build websites based on the latest web standards providing the best possible solution to your company. Um, you'll also notice that the websites and web standards are wrapped in span tags and that is because uh, you can see they are different colors than the rest of the tagline and we'll need to style those accordingly later on. So a custom field, uh, you know, it's just nothing more than coming over here, adding your own, you know, name, which is tagline, and then value, um, you know, and then you save your uh, save your post along with everything else, and I will show you now how we will pull that out. Okay, so we are still inside of our loop. I'm going to uh, open up an H3 tag with an ID of tagline. This is where we will uh, store our tagline. And now we'll say php echo get underscore post underscore meta. And this is the function that's going to allow us to grab uh, any um, values from our custom fields that we have. Well, the first thing we need to do is, um, is tell, uh, tell the function what post uh, we want to grab this from. So we'll use the post variable and we will point that to id post ID. Next we want to grab, uh, tell it what name we want to grab. We want to grab the tagline, the value of tagline, and last just pass it true. Uh, okay. Next, um, if we uh, remember, we have this little nice paper plane that we want to show up kind of to the right and a little bit um, to the right and underneath of our tagline. So we're going to insert an image here, and we'll just say uh, for the image source, WP Content Themes Paper Business Style Images Plain dot PNG, and for the alt, we'll just do uh, Paper Plain for now. And uh, we don't need to give it a custom uh, class or ID as we can just use CSS to target it um, within the H3 ID of tagline. Um, so now we have our plane inside of our tagline um, header. And now we need to pull out our content, which is the columns and, uh, you know, the dummy text we set up. And this is, you know, one of the easiest parts, which is just PHP, whoops, the content like so. Now we will end our while loop. Like so. And now we will say PHP else. And this would be in case uh, maybe there aren't any posts. If we don't have posts, we can just give a nice little, you know, something like whoops, we could not find what you were looking for. So sad. And don't forget to end our original if statement. Okay, so let's see what that gives us so far. Okay, well now we have our tagline here. We build websites based on, you know, blah blah. We have our paper airplane here. Um, who we are, what we do, which is our, which are our first two columns. So um, everything that we would expect to be here is here. Um, it looks pretty awful right now, but we will style that in just a second. Um, but next we are going to look at how to get our recent blog uh, entry to show up and how to fit it into the in with the rest of our columns that we're already going to have. So to do this, um, right after underneath our end while statement, 
we are going to use what's known as a WP or WordPress uh, custom WordPress query, which is a uh, uses the WP query object. And this is really um, just using uh, the WP WP queries is just a really awesome way to have all kinds of multiple loops going on, pulling out all kinds of different things for WordPress. And uh, and I think you'll find that this will be one of the most helpful things that you might learn um, in this series. So that said, open up some PHP tags, and we're going to create a variable called recent blog equals new WP underscore query. Okay, next we're going to do recent blog query. And now we're going to actually execute our, our query here. So we're going to say show posts, all one word, equal to one, because we only want to grab one. And now we're going to start another while loop, because now we have a custom uh, query going here. We're going to say while recent blog have posts recent blog the post. So you'll notice it's very similar um, to how we would write a regular loop except uh, now we're just kind of storing our new query object in our recent blog variable. We're running our query which is just show post of one and then we're using our while loop uh, which we'll be inside of right now to pull out whatever information we need uh, which in this case will be our latest blog entry and we want to make sure we style it just like we have the other columns so it shows up properly. So let's go ahead and end our while loop so we don't forget to do that. Okay, now inside of here, you'll remember that we have div class of front columns, which we are going to f uh, float to the left, which will make them all line up uh, like so in order. This means that we need to wrap the uh, recent uh, blog post in the same class. So we're going to say div class equals front columns. And we will close our div tag here. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is pull out the title. So we'll use some h2 tags for this. We'll say php the title and we can just use that as uh, you know like we were in any other loop uh, which we are we are inside our custom loop so we can just grab the title of our recent blog post and uh, next we want to inside some paragraph tags we want to grab um, just kind of an excerpt of the content um, from the post that we're pulling so there are a few ways to do this and uh, we could do it with the excerpt but there's a few issues that come up with that and uh, one neat way that I found to do this is with a function that's actually called the content RSS um, which is pretty neat I'll show you how it works we'll do PHP the underscore content underscore RSS okay first we're gonna pass it um, the parameters what we want it to say um, after the snippet you know like like a read more link is what so we're gonna say read more and helip which is uh, you know uh, where they have you know dot 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 afterwards next parameter is just gonna be false um, I will link to uh, the WP codex um, so you can understand what all these parameters are doing um, next we're gonna do quotes with just a space in between and lastly, we want to uh, we want to cut it off after 35 characters, which means we only want 35 uh, characters from the recent blog post that we're pulling. So to kind of recap, that's the the, the content RSS read more and helip uh, false, a little bit of a space, and 35. And uh, I will come back and explain all those parameters shortly uh, once we finish this up. But basically what that's doing is pulling out 35 character uh, snippet of our recent blog post. Um, yep. 
So next we want to uh, add a little bit of our read more link here. So we're going to open up some span tags for this. Okay. So next we'll open up an anchor tag. Say href. Inside we'll say PHP. Obviously we're going to use the permalink. And our title is going to be PHP the title. And then we'll just say something like read more and helip. And we will close our anchor tag and our span class is already closed. Okay. So let's see what that gives us and if that worked out okay. Okay, perfect. Sample blog post and it's pulling out uh, exactly what we wanted and it's appending a little bit of a read more link onto, um, onto the bottom of it. So if I go to post edit and I go to sample blog post you can see it actually is pulling the first uh, little snippet of our sample blog post just like we told it to. Um, so you know we kind of have everything we need here for the home page except for the footer which we'll set up um, so let's go ahead and do the footer and then we will uh, style all of this so open up footer.php and get rid of everything inside the p tags like so make sure to leave the WP footer hook there do not delete that or anything else uh, below that Okay, for the footer, uh, obviously we're going to give it a div ID of footer, and we'll close our div. Okay, and next inside of that, we're going to put an unordered list, because if we look at our Photoshop document, we can see that it actually lists our different pages just like it does at the top right here. So that's what we will do, and we can accomplish this now with PHP and you might remember the WP list pages function okay now what we're going to do is pass a few parameters here um, if we look at the document again you see how after home and about and how after every page uh, link here there's a little slash um, just you know to kind of separate them we need to figure out a way to put a slash after every single one of those um, which is kind of hard to do since uh, WordPress automatically outputs these as list items. But luckily with 2.7 we can pass it a parameter named link after. So inside WP list pages say link underscore after equals now make sure you put a physical space here and then slash. Okay that'll take care of that. Now uh, and then we'll say and title underscore li equals and then um, we'll just leave it like that which will output just a regular um, set of list items nothing else uh, special no nothing prefixed to it which is why we're leaving that equals blank on the title li so go ahead and save that and we'll refresh and you know there uh, there it is in all of its unstyled glory and we even have the little slashes after each one of them just like we wanted so I know this looks uh, you know pretty god awful right now but do not worry we will get to the style shortly so let's continue on with our footer and um, we're gonna give it a div class now of a line right and if you uh, will think back to our some of our styles, if we go to CSS folder, we go to layout. Um, we, it comes with a little handy uh, align right class, which uh, most uh, theme, most WordPress themes do. They come with kind of a standard set of classes, and align right is one of those, which just floats the content right. Um, it's just a nice way, um, you know, nice simple way to use a class that's already there for us and this is going to be we're aligning things right because we want to get this copyright here um, 
and our you know our title and all rights reserved to the right of our foot to the right so now we'll uh, open up some paragraph tags I'm gonna say copyright 2008 now one thing I like to do that it wasn't done in the PSD was um, we want to you know say 2008 to whatever the current year is now um, so we can kind of do 2008 dash PHP echo date uh, inside some quotes and then a lowercase y and that uh, that way we don't have to come back and change it every year it'll just say 2008 to you know 2000 to 09 kind of a handy way of letting PHP do the work for us there next we'll open up some strong tags and inside of that we will put PHP blog info name and lastly we want our little all rights reserved message because indeed all rights are reserved okay go ahead and save that and we'll look at what we got and move on to our styles which we desperately need at this point okay and there we go it's you know showing up uh, you know at least uh, how we expected and you can see that nice little uh, PHP date coming through 2008 to 2009 so you know when 2010 hits uh, you know that'll update itself so the last thing we have to do today is uh, you know open up our style.css and style all this stuff that we've just created um, and you can just kind of follow along and I'll try to explain all the styles as I go through uh, we'll start with our tagline so we'll start right here with the you know the we build websites based on and uh, that's still in our featured style section so we'll say h3 with an ID of tagline and we'll say font size 31 pixels and I don't expect you guys to know uh, obviously any of these specifics off the top of your head uh, this you know I just know all this stuff from uh, kind of messing around and measuring a lot of the uh, different theme elements and stuff so don't think I just am, am guessing on these font sizes uh, you know I ch I'll check it out in Photoshop first and then uh, save it on my notes so so don't don't feel like you just have to guess at font sizes <laughs> just open up Photoshop and uh, and figure out what the font size is and next we'll do a font weight of normal uh, our line height we're gonna set to 45 pixels our margins we're gonna have 50 pixels on the top 0 pixels on the right 100 pixels on the bottom and 0 pixels on the left and lastly we're gonna set it to a position of relative and that will help when we're trying to line up and uh, and position our paper airplane um, relative to the tagline so that's some of our tagline styles let's save that and see what that gives us okay it's getting there looking a little bit better let's move on we'll say h3 tagline span meaning any span classes inside the uh, uh, h3 uh, header with an ID of tagline will have a color of 65 uh, BDFF and if you use the eyedropper tool that's the color you will get so you will see now we got that's the um, why we needed those span classes because now we can match um, you know the Photoshop uh, layout that way like they have done there whoops okay and now we just uh, need to style the paper airplane we want to get it you know shown up right over here kind of how it is in the PSD so you'll remember that we set our uh, tagline our h3 tagline to relative position to relative and so now we can do h3 tagline image so any image that's within our h3 tag of tagline um, and now we can do position absolute width is 200 pixels whoops height 
is 175 pixels top negative 18 pixels and right is negative 95 pixels and now it will always be absolutely positioned relative to this tagline so when I refresh we'll see it's exactly uh, where we want it and I got it there by just messing around with the top uh, and right values until I got it where I uh, was happy with it so uh, there is our tagline in our airplane already styled not too tricky and we are done with our featured styles section so now we're just going to create a new section for those front columns that we talk so much about today I probably overhyped how hard that would be because this is going to be quite simple remember all of our, our all three columns that we have including our blog uh, post query is it is contained within a div class of front columns so what we're going to do is set a width to the which is 245 pixels we want to float them to the left uh, we want the font size to be 13 pixels and the margins we want 21 pixels on the right um, if you worked the math out which I did um, you know that is what you'd come up with I actually think you come up with like 21.7 pixels of a margin but obviously 21 pixels will do just fine okay and that is all the styling we need for front columns let's uh, let's see what that gives us already okay so you can already see that uh, the columns are at least lining up in the order and how we'd like them to uh, you know to a degree now we just need to work on more of the typography and the styling so now let's say class front columns h3 or I'm sorry h2 font size is slightly smaller than the uh, tagline size so it's font size of 28 pixels margin uh, we want to give it 10 pixels on the top none on the right 20 on the bottom and none on the left and we want to give them a font weight of normal save that we'll refresh looking even better you know, if we kinda start comparing it to our Photoshop document you can see we're getting closer and closer uh, next we want to say front columns P for paragraph tags and now we just want to change the line height on these because right now it's not we need much more line height than we have going on right now so let's say line height of uh, uh, 23 pixels and lastly we'll say front columns A for anchor tags will be a color of 65 BDFF all right and let's come back refresh and uh, it's looking pretty nice our columns are I mean pretty close to how we'd like them to be um, you know think that the typography and everything of course you guys can criticize me if um, not the greatest designer but I think the the typography and you know the in the line height and, and on the font sizes look pretty close to you know to, to what we got right now so uh, moving on the last thing is our footer and we will be done styling our home page uh, minus the uh, slider which we will talk about in our next series so we will start a new section called footer styles and first we will style our footer ID our div ID of footer we want to set that background that we have transparent URL style images uh, I forgot what it's called let's see okay it's called footer underscore BG dot JPEG we do not want it to repeat and we want it to scroll it's a width of 819 pixels it's a height of 126 pixels 
Uh, set some margins here. 70 on the top. None on the right. 50 on the bottom and about negative 12 on the left to kind of pull it over to the left there to align things. And a color. Uh, we want to set a default color for our footer here, which is going to be kind of a lighter uh, gray, kind of a charcoal gray, which is 9F, 9F, 9F. And lastly, we will set our default font size for uh, anything contained within our footer of 14 pixels. So, I don't know if you've noticed, but Jeffrey did a really kind of nice job as, as I was going through the CSS of just making real, um, you know, minor changes in font size and font weights to kind of um, draw the user's eye throughout the theme. So, um, you know, take note of that because I thought that was, you know, really well done just using subtle things like uh, font size and font weight to really have a nice impact on the design. But, uh, sorry about that little rant there. Let's continue here with... Uh, footer and now let's style our, our, uh, our navigation which is inside an unordered, unordered list. I cannot talk today. Okay and uh, we're just going to give that a little bit of padding. So we're going to say 60 pixels on the top, uh, 0 on the right, 0 on the bottom and kind of 28 pixels on the left. Let's go ahead and save and see what we're looking at so far. So it's, it's awful right now because we have a few, <laughs> few more things we have to take care of here. Let, let's move on before we do that again. Okay, let's say footer unit list or unordered list. I'm sorry, and then our list items. We're going to float them left, display inline, and we're going to give them a margin on the right of about eight pixels. We'll save that. And uh, before I forget, I, I th that, that just reminded me of something. Um, let's make sure that we uh, clear our floats this time. So underneath um, our div class of front columns where we have our, uh, our custom query going, just go ahead and give it a, a BR class of dirty little trick which will uh, it's just kind of a pre set up WordPress class that we've discussed before that will allow us to clear any floats if you don't like adding an extra you know markup to clear your floats you know do it however you like this is the way I like doing it it you know I can keep track of it where I'm clearing my floats and it just works for me so uh, don't do not forget to clear your floats because I think I forgot to do that last time Okay, so let's go back to our style and let's continue. Now let's do uh, footer, unordered list, list item with a class of current page item, and then in any anchor tags inside that. We want them to have a color of uh, 6C, 6C, 6C. So, what is that all about? Um, the list with current page item uh, and then the anchor tag inside of that. Well if you look here on our PSD you'll notice that the home which is the current page item right now um, is slightly darker than the other page uh, links and WordPress automatically adds a class called current page item to whatever the uh, current page item is here. Um, so obviously that will be home few more styles left to take care of. Now we need to take care of our uh, default anchor colors which would be all the other ones besides the current page item and that will just be uh, 9F, 9F, 9F. We will style our footer paragraphs so we'll do footer ID paragraph and then we will say margin right of 30 pixels, you'll re you'll remember that we're floating that uh, to the right with a uh, div class of a line right, so we need to kind of push it away from the edge there a little bit. And last but not least, we will say footer paragraph strong. So any strong tags within the paragraph within the footer ID will have a color of 
6C, 6C, 6C. Because not only is the text strong, it is actually a different color um, if you look close enough on the paper business here with the eyedropper tool. So uh, let's take a look at what that did. Perfect. You can see all of our styles are showing up uh, exactly like we'd like them to. Our current page item, which is home, is a slightly darker color than the rest. Um, you know, we're getting those little slashes in between each one. If I were to click on about, which obviously is not going to be styled, but I scroll down, you can see that about is now the, uh, the darker color. So that is what current page item does. Um, and, you know, guys, we are pretty much done with our front page um, besides the slider, which is kind of a, a file in itself. But we can, I think we can go ahead and consider most of our front page a success. Um, yeah, and I think that's where we'll leave off today. So hopefully you guys, uh, you know, learned a lot of stuff today. Um, I'll make sure to leave um, a bunch of links today below uh, for all of you because I have a lot of things that I think that need to be uh, discussed and um, oh before I forget we were also floating uh, something in our footer so let's go ahead and, uh, and clear that and we'll say uh, BR class of dirty little trick and obviously we're not gonna probably not gonna be putting any information underneath um, our footer but it's always a good idea just to you know clear your floats just to keep your uh, your layout in good check and uh, so you don't have any unexpected problems. Alrighty, I think I've rambled on long enough today, guys. Um, I will see you for day 15 where we will start on our slider. Have any suggestions, comments, anything? Let me know. Uh, happy WordPress coding, guys, and have a wonderful day.